Now comes the action on your part. We will start by explaining and setting up the development environment needed for setting up your plugin. To begin, we are working with Revit version 2018, so make sure you have that version installed. The script we are writing has been tested with this version, though it might also work with versions 2016 and 2017 with a few tweaks. If you're a student, Revit offers educational versions of 2018. If you're a professional, you can download a free trial version of Revit 2018 from Autodesk or request that your organization upgrade to this version. Also, make sure that your machine has the minimum hardware required to run this software, which are shown here on Autodesk's website. Of course, this runs in Windows and uh, runs on 64-bit. The minimum requirement for memory is 4 gigabyte of RAM, and there is other additional information for graphics and disk space. Personally, I prefer to work with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a high definition monitor due to the uh, versions of the projects I'm working on and the size of my models. Once you've ensured you're working within Revit 2018, there are two plugins I would recommend installing to boost the development of those plugins. The first of which is Revit Lookup by Jeremy Temerick. Very, very useful, and I can go into in depth of what it does later, but essentially it allows you to go into your model and test and to look at elements and to view all sorts of data about your model so that you can easily input it into code. So I would recommend going to this website and clicking on this link to download it. Take you to a Dropbox. Open up the file extract it, and also read the installation information. So here, it tells you to copy the add-in and the .dl file into this location on your machine. So let's do that. Program data, probably have to type that in. From there, all the desks. Revit, add-ins, 2018. From there, you copy and paste these two files into this location. And once you've done that, I would recommend, it also tells you to go here and right-click on the DL file on properties, and then unblock. So of course this happens within this location here. Since I've already unblocked it on my machine, it, the option doesn't appear. The most important tool to have installed within Revit is the PyRevit add-in. We use this add-in to install and test our own plugin in Revit. Surely I will also go much more in depth on this and the value of PyRevit. But first, let's make sure you follow the proper installation steps from this website, which will also be provided to you. Click on Download the Installer, and the most current release should do, and follow the steps from there. Where we will write and debug our actual Python code is actually outside of Revit in an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. This will allow for a faster development of your project, including automating the build of your code, easy search features, and an array of debugging tools to reduce the potential of errors. The tool I'm recommending for this project is Microsoft Visual Studio and PyCharm. To install Visual Studio, you go to this website, which will be provided in the References page. Select Download for Windows and Download Community if you want a free version. Once you have it downloaded, it's easy to start a Python project. All you do is click File, New, and Project. From there, you navigate to the side panel, click Python, and then click Python Application. And you will begin and have a Python file. We will go over where you should save your file later on in this course, but keep that in mind as you Label and name your files. 
Once you're within Visual Studio, it offers a vast array of tools. The first few I can go over right now, you know, show how you can use this toolbar and sidebar to look for things. Like you notice that there's a slight teal bar right here, and it just tells you that perhaps this code that we have here, the library is referencing, is not located anywhere in the project. And it will show us how to fix that. Likewise, you see that there are red bars, and the red bars indicate potential errors in, bu in bugging. So this bug shows that there's a weird dent indentation. Similar here. Also, the sidebar is very useful when searching for items. Say I want to search for the word create. Now I can scroll down the sidebar and it shows me all locations in the script where I've typed the word create for a function or for a variable. And in this particular case, the use of the word create indicates all locations where I call an element to be generated within the Revit model after being built up by the rest of the code and supported by it. Additionally, you can use some of the tools to find common bugs. Such we saw earlier, there is a indentation error. You would go to Edit, Advance, and maybe there's something uh, related to tabifying or using the spaces. So you would definitely use this to fix some errors later on. And we will go through more detailed ways to find and debug the code. You also notice that for this red underlined, perhaps it was a tabifying error. So I'm going to control all. Go back to the location I mentioned and tabify. And you saw that the errors went away. And of course, there's a lot more to this. I would definitely encourage you to get very familiar with uh, using the view to personalize your development environment and not just to debug your code, which we will cover bit later on. The other IDE I recommend is PyCharm. To download PyCharm, you go to this website, which will be provided in the reference pages. Click download and perhaps ensure that you're also in the community and download the free version. To create a PyCharm file is very similar to creating a file in Visual Studio. Go to File, New Project, and Python, of course, is already the default here, but pure Python, and then you create your project, saving the file in the location that we'll talk about later using naming conventions that we will also discuss. Personally, I will use Visual Studio uh, for him or here on out because I'm very familiar with it. But I encourage you to proceed with whichever IDE you might feel more comfortable with. Finally, I would confirm that I would also have Python versions 2.7 installed. Um, follow the steps shown on the website to install it. It might be less critical that you have this step completed since the Revit plugins and IDE should be able to execute on Python code, code with their built-in developments and dependencies. However, I expect for you to have much more confidence in your development skills and work on a wider range of projects outside of Revit once you're done with this course.